Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. And he Jesus is the Throughout my life, I've had some difficult days and I've had some fearful moments. And in those moments, there is a passage of scripture that comes to my mind and it soothes my spirit. It calms me. It is a word from the Lord found in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter number one. It is the words that God gave to Joshua just before they were about to cross the river over into Jordan or to the Canaan's land. I want you to listen to these words and may they be a comfort to you in your moments of fear. The Bible says these words, Joshua chapter one, beginning with verse number one. And after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given you as I said to Moses from the wilderness and to this Lebanon as far as the great river the river Euphrates all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. But to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Here it is, Israel. And its army are banked are on the east side of the Jordan River. And they can look over and see Canaan's land, the land that God had promised he would give them. Now they are looking over at Canaan. And they had been in the wilderness for 40 years. It was only an 11 day trip from Egypt to Canaan, but it took them 40 years to get from Egypt to Canaan. And someone said, what took you so long? I want you to listen to what happened to Israel. Why, why did it take them 40 years? Go from Egypt to Canaan. The one thing that stood between them and Canaan was fear. They were afraid. They were afraid of the Canaanites. And sometimes, my friends, fear stops us. 
Sometimes fear prevents us from realizing our goals and reaching the promised land. But God comes along and he says to Joshua and Israel, he, he soothes their fears by saying these words. Be of good courage. Be not afraid. That's our subject today. Be of good courage. Don't be afraid. I want you to know, my friends, that here the Bible says to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. God allowed 30 days of mourning when one of the children of Israel died. Their loved one died. God allowed them 30 days of mourning. And now they, they're over the 30 days. And God said, now it's time to go over now. It's time to move on. I don't want to embarrass you. And I don't want to be disrespectful to you. That comes a time when our loved ones pass away, that it comes a time for us to move on. After you have mourned, after you have cried, after you have done all of this, it's time to move on. And here it is, God said, now, Israel, you have mourned Moses, now it's time to move on. Yes, my friends. We are not in this situation. We don't have to fight an army. But I believe that every one of us are fighting or are facing fearful moments. And these scriptures apply to us as it did to Israel and Joshua. Because the Bible says this, the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. So, so therefore, the principles of success and the principles of courage are the same. So we come here today because there is someone here who was fearful. What is your greatest fear? I know that you're afraid of something, but, but what is your greatest fear? Is it pain? Are you afraid of failure? Are you afraid to die? Are you afraid of COVID-19? What is your greatest fear? And as we come to meet our greatest fear, God comes along and he says, be of good courage. Be of good courage today. The reason why, the reason why, the reason why Israel was fearful was because you remember Moses Several years earlier, it sent out uh, uh, 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan to see how they could overtake the land. And the Bible says that, that 10 of the spies came back and they gave an ill report. They said, they said to Moses and they said to Israel as they stood before the congregation of Israel, the, 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 the land of Canaan, yes, it's a beautiful land, but there are giants in the land and, and the cities are walled, they have walls. And don't you know, don't you know that this particular place, there are strong individuals there. They had a year report. There were two men there, had a courageous report. One of those men was Joshua and the other man was Caleb, king to Israel. And they stood up and they gave a good report. And they say, yes, the people are strong. Yes, the city is a wall. Yes, and yes, there are giants in the land. But we are able because the Lord is with us. My friends, sometimes when you are afraid, you see ghosts that are not there. Sometimes when you are afraid, you are um, molehill look like mountains and, and mice look like elephants. When you are afraid, cowards, cowards look at situations and they can see impossibilities. 
But courageous men can look at the same situation and they see possibilities. And so it was with, with Joshua and, and Caleb. They said, we are able, let's go up and take the land. But the children of Israel were frightened. And for 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness because they were afraid to go in. What courage. I want you to listen to a little man by the name of Caleb. I want you to listen to him again. Now he's 85 years old and now they're about to go in and conquer the land and divide the land. And the Bible says this Caleb stood as he looked over and looked and saw the land of Canaan and and the Hebrew mountain. And, uh, and he said to Israel and Joshua. Give me this mountain. Give me the mountain of Hebron. It was the most difficult place. Because the giants live in the mountains. And what, and what Caleb was saying. Uh, Give me this mountain. Give me the opportunity to, to go and fight and, and secure this mountain. Oh, what courage Caleb had. He didn't say, give me my cane. He didn't say, give me my walker. He didn't say, give me my rocking chair. He did not say, give me my retirement. But Caleb said, give me this mountain. Give me the opportunity to serve. Give me the opportunity to fight. Give me this mountain. I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, God has no retirement plan in this church. Let me say it again. God has no retirement plan in the church. God said these words. Jesus said these words. Be you faithful unto death. Not until difficulties. Not until you get sick. Not until there's pain and suffering. Not until you get old. But be thou faithful until death. There are two ways to exit this life, my friend. There are two ways, only two ways to exit this life. You can wear out or you can rust out. You can wear out with service to the Lord or you can rust out with inactivity. Two ways to leave this world. I don't want you to know the, the meaning of courage, the biblical meaning of courage. The biblical meaning of courage is not the absence of fear and, and what God was saying to Israel and to all of us. Yes, you may be afraid, but, but the biblical idea of courage uh, is to act in the face of fear. Even though you are afraid, go ahead and do what God says. That's the idea of biblical courage. Even though, even though your, your hands are shaking, even though your knees are knocking, and, and even though you are terrified, do us right anyway. That's the biblical idea of courage. You see, when you are afraid, there are several biological and physiological and, and psychological things that will happen. When you are afraid, the adrenaline glands will release adrenaline into your bloodstream. And then your eyes began to dilate. And then your heart began to beat. And then your, your breathing became, becomes increased. And, and there are several physiological changes that go on. Your mind becomes vexed with all kinds of negative ideas. And what God is telling us today with this idea of being encouraged, even though these biological and physiological and psychological things are happening, do us right. Do what I told you to do. Go ahead and conquer the land of Canaan. Go ahead and do what's right. Because, my friends, my friends, all of us, all of us are afraid of something. 
Let me say it again. All of us, every one of us are afraid of something. We just choose what we are afraid of. Any man that said that he's not afraid of nothing is either lying or he's crazy. And what God is telling us, even though you are afraid, even though your knees are knocking, and even though your mind is vexed, you do what I told you to do. You obey the Lord. I want you to listen to the words of courage. You remember Queen Esther. She was a queen in the Persian kingdom. And do you not know there came a day when the Jews were on the chopping block there. The whole nation of Jews were to be exterminated and killed. You ought to know the story. And Queen Esther was asked to go before the king and plead the, the life of the Jews. And she was a Jew herself. And do you not know it was illogical or unlawful for anyone to approach the king uninvited because it could have been fatal. It was against the law. I want you to listen to King, the Queen Esther. She said these words in Esther chapter 4 and verse number 16. She said, and so I will go before the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Oh, what courage. I'm going before the king. I may die, but I'm going anyway. I may lose my position, but I'm going anyway. I may lose my life, but I'm going anyway. I may lose my reputation, but I'm going anyway. That's courage. My friends, it comes a time when we need to stand up and have courage. There comes a time when you say, I, I, I may lose my, I may lose my job. My, my boss may fire me, but I'm going to do the right thing. Oh, my family may disown me, but I'm doing the right thing. Oh, my enemies may harm me, but I'm doing the right thing. And even though I may lose my life, I'm going to do the right thing. That's courage. That's courage. I want you to listen to the source of our courage. You can have courage today as Israel and Joshua had courage. Because the presence of the Lord brings courage. The presence of the Lord brings courage. This is what God said to Israel and Joshua. God said to Israel and Joshua, you don't have to be afraid. You can be of good courage because I will be with you. I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So therefore, you can have courage because I'm with you. Oh, that brings courage today. And throughout the Bible, God says to all of his people, I will be with you. He said it to Moses. Yes, he said it to David. Yes, he said it to the apostles. He said it to Joshua. He said it to Israel. And he says to every Christian today, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That gives me courage. That gives me courage, my brothers and sisters. I want you to know that David was a man that was in so many fearful moments. David was a man that faced death almost every day. You remember that day, even as a small boy, he faced the biggest and the baddest man on the planet. His name was Goliath. And do you remember when he faced Saul? Saul wanted to kill him. Every day he ran from Saul. And there was a day when, when, when David's own army wanted to kill him. But David found, David found courage in the presence of the Lord. And David said these words. Though I will walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou Oh, with me. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Oh, David, the presence of God calls courage to build within David. My friend, we find the same courage today. Oh, we find the same courage today. Yes, we need the presence of the Lord. There's an old spiritual that we used to sing many years ago. We don't sing it anymore. You ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. In the streets, in the home, in the crowds, all alone, highway, byway. You ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, don't leave home without him. Don't leave home without Jesus. Don't leave home without the Lord. Take him with you everywhere you go. But there is a condition to the presence of God. I said there is a condition to the presence of God. God said to Joshua and God said to Israel, I will be with you if you observe all of the laws that I gave to you at Moses. I want you to listen to the condition in Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the laws which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. That thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. God said, I'll be with you. I'll be with you as long as you are with me. I will be with you as long as you obey my law. I will be with you. Don't you turn to the right or to the left. Hold it in the road. Don't you turn to the right and don't you turn to the left. Don't you be liberal and don't you be conservative. You hold it in the road. And I want you to obey all of my commands, not just some of them. Don't you pick and choose the command that you want to obey. Don't you pick and choose. I want you to obey all of my word. God is not talking about being sinless or perfect. But he's talking about not picking and choosing the commands we want to obey. You know, sometimes we, there are some commands that we love, to, we love and we, we obey them and they are comfortable to us. But there are some difficult commands for many of us. And God says in so many words, I want you to obey all of them, even the difficult words, even the difficult commands. Obey them and I'll bless you. And so it was. God was true to his word. I said God was true to his word. Everywhere that Israel went, every city they came to, they conquered the city. They conquered the city and God was true to his word until they got to the small city of Ai. A little small city north of Jericho. They went, they went, they went to, to Ai. They took only 300 men to Ai. And the Bible said they went to Ai. And the small city of Ai ran them out of town. Defeated them miserably. And they came back with the tails tucked. And Joshua went to the Lord and he said something like this, Lord, you said you're going to be with us. Lord, you say you will never leave us. Lord, what is happening? We've been defeated, Lord, in Ai. I want you to listen to what God said. God said in so many words, there is sin in the camp. There is sin in the camp. I told you, I'll be with you as long as you obey my word. I'll be with you, but there is sin in your camp. Achan stuck with some silver and gold. 
hid it in his tent. God said, God said in so many words, you can't win with sin. That's my message to all of us today. You cannot win with sin. The Bible says that God, God had Joshua the stone Achan because he stole. Do you remember when Ananias and the fire lied? They were stoned to death. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, that God is not stoning men today for lying and stealing. Aren't you glad today? All of us would not be here if God was stoning individuals for lying and stealing. But that's why Jesus died. Jesus died so you won't die. Even though you steal, Jesus died for you stealing. If you repent. And so, God said to Israel, I will be with you. And every city that Israel came up against, they were victorious as long as they obeyed the word of the Lord. City after city, city after city, until they conquered the whole nation of Canaan. Until they came to the promised land, they, 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 they were there and God was with them every step of the way. God will be with you, my friends. God will be with you as long as you are with, the, with God. God will be with you as long as you obey the word of God. God will be with you as long as you stand, even though you are afraid, even though your, your hands are trembling, and even though your knees are knocking. If you do what the Lord says, the Lord will be with you. God said these words, and I'm closing. I won't let you fail. Israel, I won't let you fail. I, I will be with you and I won't let you fail. As long, as long as you obey my word, I will not let you fail. Don't you know God is saying the same thing to us? I won't let you fail. One of the greatest fears that man has is the, is, the, is the fear of failure. But God says, I won't let you fail. I'll lead you to the promised land. Just do what I say. I will not fail you. I will not leave you. Oh, God. Oh, the glory of God. Oh, the blessing of God. Be of good courage. Don't you fear. God got you covered. God got your back. Just do what he says. Yes, this leads us to the Lord's Supper. Jesus Christ died so that you won't have to die. He left us a memorial. It's called the Lord's Supper. We've been giving this Lord's Supper because there are some who can't meet in services. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper over 2,000 years ago. He said, take this bread. It's an emblematic of my body that's broken. And take the, the fruit of the vine, which is emblematic of my blood being shed on Calvary. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ came and coming into this world, died for our sins. He died that we don't have to die. Thank you for the bread. Thank you for the fruit of the vine. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance for me. He said, this is my blood. Drink ye all of it. This is my blood shed for you for the remission of sins. We thank you, O Lord, for your body. We thank you, O Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. While we're here, we want to thank you for your contribution to the work and the services of God. Thank you. 
May God richly bless you today.